I'm David Liggett with Data Center Hawk, and I'm very excited to be joined by Jeff Brewer. Jeff is the CEO for Consuelo Networks. Jeff, thank you so much for joining. It's great to see you. Nice to see you, and thanks for making time for me today. You bet. Um, okay, so what I'm excited about, uh, well, one of the things I'm excited about during this conversation is uh, to do a deeper dive on connectivity. So much of like the data center space right now, people that listen to our podcast and, and just during the industry, you know, it's power, 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 and where can we find more? And and that's that's certainly a challenge in the space. But, um, you know, connectivity, uh, networks, uh, performance, uh, that type of uh, information and understanding is is really valuable and has to be done efficiently for data center applications and things like that to work effectively. So th this is your world, your background, and I'm really excited. But but for those that might not know you, uh, give it, give us a background of kind of like how you ended up starting this and, and being the leader of the company. Sure. Um, so I got into telecom about 26 years ago. Um, I'm legacy level three, early days, first 100 employees. Um, I ended up, before I left there, I was running the vendor relations group. So I was on okay. the box side of things. Um, had an opportunity to get into international sa telecom sales. I went to 360 Network. Some people may be familiar with that. I got there just in time for us to go into bankruptcy. And uh, <laughs> that was an interesting time. Um, but what it did was it gave me exposure to a lot of global networks and networking. Um, and I it took me into Hibernia Networks, which was uh, what I did for the next big chunk of my career. So I've been doing global solutions for about 23 years, I'd say. Um, and I have a real interest in that. And then we founded Console Networks because we were seeing gaps in the industry as far as connectivity goes. And we are connectivity specialists. That's, that's really what we focus on. And so we started this company a couple of years ago, focused on the connectivity aspect of the industry globally. And talk about the where you're focused and how you're, you know, talking with customers and helping groups from a connectivity standpoint. So our approach to connectivity is that we like to create connectivity, global connectivity solutions for customers that are not easy to source. And in many cases, we can create connectivity solutions for customers that can't be single sourced from any global provider today. So we do that through our knowledge of global networks. We, look, we spend a lot of time looking at maps and KMZs and what have you to figure out how to put various networks together. Yep. One of the things we do uh, that we like to bring to the table is routes um, on maps or routes as products that customers have probably never seen before. Could be cross-border into Canada, into Mexico, okay. diverse access into subsea cable systems, or diverse use of networks in and out of data centers. So um, that's interesting. Just maybe describe an easy scenario that you're, you talked about before as it relates to like, we're doing the opposite. We're providing, you know, some uh, like a, a unique set of routes and a focus on maybe harder use cases. So what I guess I'd love to hear you talk about is maybe what's an easy use case in this market. And then I think you all have set your business up to solve some of these harder use cases. Will you kind of talk just those back and forth and just tell us what those might be for people listening? Sure. So like an, an, an easy source would be a customer. I'll use a data center customer. For yeah. example. You've got to get from a data center facility to a regional office, but they've got specific avoidance or routing requirements. And it might take two or three networks to go from the data center itself to their end location. In that case, then the customer is required to identify which networks they can put together and get the end-to-end sure. -end solution they do. So for us, it's easy for us to look at, at the networks that serve a given data center and figure out how to extend that to meet the customer requirements. Um, and then from a complexity standpoint, we can get into multiple networks, you know, two, three, four, um, to get into high levels of avoidance, or in some cases, uh, customers may want uh, matching latency for protection purposes, not low latency, but a matching protection path. Um, to run their business. And we can we can dive into that as well. And what types of, this is a bit off script, but what type of um, uh, industry verticals are you seeing like value different types of connectivity? So like if you think about the financial services sector or technology, or maybe talk about how those companies look and value um, network performance and connectivity efficiency. Sure. I mean, obviously, financial services is a, is a big industry vertical, but you've got manufacturing, pharmaceutical, you've got um, any fintech or you know, traders. Um, 
So they're looking at ways to create network connectivity that complements maybe what they already have today. They might need a secondary path to match with that. So anyone that needs stable, reliable, we focus on point to point network okay. connectivity. Um, and that's kind of where we, we specialize. Um, so for customers looking for that, that's where we excel. And, and from a data center operator perspective, um, what are you seeing them do well? Um, how do their customers, you know, from, from your standpoint, you're working with their customers, but how do you, you see maybe data center operators serving their customers well when it comes to fiber connectivity? And then what are some of the other things that might be a gap in the service of a, you know, space power and cooling data center provider that they might not offer from a network standpoint? Sure. Um, I think for us, one thing we, we like to, from, from a data center perspective, connectivity, I think we have a slightly different meaning for what it is we do and, and how they leverage that. So connectivity to many data center operators is how many fiber optic networks do they have serving a given facility? Um, that's really important. And it's really important to customers. We take it a little step further and say, how would a customer utilize that connectivity? You've, you've worked hard to bring these networks in. How do they use that? Or can we help them get the connectivity they require to run their business? And in some cases, um, the sales teams at the data center operators are focused on what it is they do. They sell space and sure. power and they're aware of connectivity, but they're not connectivity specialists. And while they acknowledge that connectivity is a critical part of the sales process, we're, we'd like to you know, bring ourselves um, into the conversation to say, listen, we can help you have meaningful conversations with your customers about connectivity where you don't have to be a specialist, but we can sure. help get the connect or the help them get the connectivity they need and utilize your facility the way they need to. And when you're when you're talking to the customers that you have, what are some of the do's and the don'ts of, you know, and this might be like just best practices of companies looking to optimize their network or or just make their their network more efficient? Like what do you tell customers? What are kind of the things to do and not to do? So we think the important thing for a lot of people running their own networks is to understand the network topology and what it is they actually have, especially those who have specific requirements for diversity. Um, in many cases, it's difficult to verify that type of information. So that's one of the things that we bring to the table is when we design a solution, we're fully transparent about what it is we do, which networks we have, where the internet connects are, we provide estimated latency. So a customer can make a, a comprehensive decision about the connectivity that, that they've looked at. Um, it's become ever challenging now with some of the, the consolidation in the telecommunications industry with these large companies acquiring more and more assets, customers may find it difficult to get the information they need to, to get the solutions that they need. So just th them struggling to like, just internally understand what they have so that they can almost build, set a base level and then grow from there. That's just a challenge for most companies. Uh, companies know typically what product they want and the endpoints, but, and they understand the, the, the operational aspects of what it is they need, but they're not always particularly good at sourcing that and ensuring that what it is, they're getting exactly what it is they need. And that's a bit of a gap in the, in the side. It's either a high level of complexity or no ability to verify the level of they may or may not need. Um, because they're working, you know, they may or may not get full information. So sure. that's, in, in an effort to be fully transparent, we will we will share with them what it is we put together so they can they can take a look at that and see if it is exactly what they need. And when you when you all run your process, how many um, how many uh, vendors will you talk to typically or bring to the table for the solutions that you're offering? Is this a deal where you'll go out and find the exact group and route that makes the most sense? Or do you take this out to five different groups and try to price it accordingly and figure that out from a negotiating standpoint? How does that typically work? So we, we work in close collaboration with a customer to identify exactly what it is they need. And in some cases, there may only be one or two options to get them what it I is see. they need. In other cases, it could be a multitude of vendors, in which case we work with vendors, obviously, that we know and trust and can work closely with. But we also can offer a customer a multitude of options and say, look, here's Here's how they differ. Um, we don't necessarily have to go back with our own single solution for that customer. Sure. Um, so if we pull back a little bit and you think about um, maybe what the business was like back in the level three days and and how it's changed, and then maybe maybe talk about the future too. Um, kind of just give everyone a, maybe a history on the evolution of this 
market? You know, what maybe, so when level three, you were at level three, what was, how did these processes, processes work back then? And then how do you see them like evolving down the road? Mm -hmm. So in the early days, obviously size of network is quite different now. Um, we, we had a very much smaller scalable backbone at level three, but I think what you see now is on the enterprise customer side, the level of connectivity, the size of connectivity, and in many cases, the complexity of the connectivity has shifted and grown. Mm -hmm. And with that, then again, back to the consolidation in the industry, it sometimes is very difficult to get uh, unique or routing diversity um, because many, if I look at the long the long haul networks of of uh, and networks of level three and some other providers, the maps look very similar. So how does a customer navigate between two city points in North America or cross border into Canada uniquely when everyone's network seems to be uh, very similar? And I'd say the consolidation has made choices fewer, um, greater bandwidth, um, yep. lower prices. But uh, for the people who need something different or diverse, it's it's a challenge. Makes sense. And then when you think about the next like three to five years in the industry, what what gets you most excited and and you know thinking about the opportunities that are out there, uh, what what gets you most excited about that? Well, for us, I mean, in the data center space, obviously th there's gonna be continued growth well into the future. So the number of sites, the amount of capacity, um, we believe there's gonna be continued uniqueness of capacity and the need for com complex and, and unique connectivity. So we, we, we're we looking to, to ride those coattails on the growth. We don't think the number of customers who need connectivity is gonna continue to grow. And we're just, want to be there to help them get the connectivity they need. Absolutely. And how does AI, is AI impacting like the AI growth in that use case? Does that require a different level of connectivity? And and what is that like for you? Well, that requires a huge chunks of capacity, obviously. Um, and so I think some of it's yet to be seen. There's going to be large volumes and large connectivity between the the facilities that house the AI. So as the, the large data centers grow globally, you're gonna see an increased amount of volume. Um, so I think that's that's gonna be big. We don't play in the large space. Um, so, you know, 100 gigs, terabits, that kind of thing, but um, we, you're still gonna have connectivity requirements in and out of some of those facilities that need some uniqueness. Sure, well, it's, it's very clear that this is going to keep being a, a major part of the data center space, as well as, you know, other types of use cases. And Jeff, thanks for your feedback and, and expertise. Um, you know, it's really helpful for our listeners and, and we appreciate it. So if people want to learn more about your business and find you, where can they go? Our website is uh, consuonetworks.com. So just www.consuonetworks.com. And what, is, what does that Consuo stand for? I think I'm glad you asked. Thanks, Dave. So uh, <laughs> Consuo means stitch in Latin. And so we stitch network assets together to create the solutions customers need. That's yeah. how we continue. That's great. Well, Jeff, thank you very much for being on. We appreciate it. Look forward to catching you on the next one. Thank you for your time, David. Appreciate it.